Hey guys, we're in the Carnage Workshop today and I've got to apologise, it's been a while since we've done a video because we've just done Drag Challenge and they put a massive dent in our Carnage productivity. There's so much that had to be done with that that it's really put us behind, but today I've got to do an oil change on this Barina so we can take it out next week to Bryant Park. We're going to have some fun with that. You'll see all that in a future Carnage episode because we've done some upgrades to the suspension and stuff on this, so it's going to be a bit of fun. Uh, Trolvo's down at max performance right now, getting exhaust system before we put on the dyno. So yes, we're very close to dynoing that, so that's gonna be awesome. So watch out for that. That'll be our next major carnage video. Plus we've got a secret project up the back that we're gonna be doing some work on. And the Rust-Oleum Valiant, we've also got a hook into that. So lots going on in the carnage workshop. You'll see the Rust-Oleum Valiant videos starting to come through in a few weeks, but uh, yeah, it is all happening, I've gotta say. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do 20 things you probably didn't know about Scotty. So leading up to Christmas, we just thought, yeah, why not do something a bit different? Uh, I've got to do this oil change, so I'm going to be answering the questions while I'm doing the work. So sorry if I'm ducking in and under the car and whatever, but can fire away. Let's get this thing happening. Ugh. All right, nice and easy one for you while you're crawling under the car. How old are you? <laughs> as old as dirt. Um, I'm a 70 model, so that makes me 49, would you believe it? Yeah, 49 years old. I'm starting to feel it, I'll tell you. Where did you grow up? Grew up at a lot of different places. Um, Dad was a bit of a uh, wandering spirit, I guess, in our younger years, so he moved around a bit but uh, when we did settle down we settled down in a little place called Uarbury which no one's probably heard of or actually no one had heard of until a couple of years ago when the whole place burnt down during those very wild New South Wales bushfires so um, it's a little village of about 12 houses and the place got decimated in those New South Wales bushfires and the whole place pretty much burnt down we had a uh, a block of land up in the bush about three k's from there it, it would be gone now it would be just totally destroyed um, and it was uh, yeah 450 acres oh, out in the middle of New South Wales bush and it was like the best place to grow up so old cars guns motorbikes it was a yeah boys own dream place to grow up I'll tell you Lots of fun had out there. Yeah, I'm a country boy. What's next? Where did you go to school? Oh yeah, school. <laughs> All right, so I went to a little uh, school called um, Cooler Central School. So for those that aren't familiar with uh, New South Wales country schools, they have these schools called Central Schools. And the Central Schools are all the kids from kindergarten through to year 12 in one school. So we had like maybe 300 kids in the whole school. Like my year 12 class was 12 kids. 12 kids total. Nine girls, three boys. Pretty good odds. So, yeah, that's where I went to school, Cooler Central School. Went through to year 12 and, uh, yeah, I have mixed feelings about it, but hey, it's school. No one really enjoys school, do they? Here's a big one. Oh yeah. Exciting factor. What was your first car? My first car. Well, I have to qualify that statement because being a country boy, I had access to um, a fair few cars growing up. Now, oh, so we had seven HQs out on the property where I grew up. So I grew up a lot with HQ Holdens. So I built one up when I was from about 14 to 16. I built one from the chassis up. I did have a couple Falcons, like I had an XP Falcon Ute that I used to drive around on the property as a paddock basher that I got given for free by another local property owner. I also had an XL wagon that, um, XL or XM? Might have been an XM wagon that um, I bought for 20 bucks. Um, so that were kind of my first two running cars. The HQ Ute I built up, like I said, through my teenage years, built, reading Street Machine and just doing it all. Where I grew up, 
here's the thing that you, no one will ever realise and no one will be, everyone will be surprised at. I grew up on a house, in a house, with no electricity. True story. We had no 240 volt electricity. We had a single solar panel. This is back in the mid 80s or early to mid 80s. No electricity, single solar panel, all our tools, well, we had one power tool, it was a 12 volt drill. So I stripped a HQ ute chassis back by hand with a 12 volt drill and a wire brush and then, yeah, rust coated the whole thing. Um, yeah, just was amazing. When you're gonna think about, you know, just, I had the most average set of tools to work with, one power tool, you know, and I built that ute up. I turned it from a chassis, bare chassis, into a running and driving car in the dirt. We had no shed to work out of. It was in the dirt, in the paddock. Did that, turned it into a running driving car. Got close to Rego and my dad goes, you know what, I want your ute, I'll buy you a car. So we went to Mudgee, which was kind of the big local town. You know, it was still an hour's drive away. And uh, I found a two-door Tirana, LJ, 173, column shift, beige, red interior. That was my first registered car, and I loved it. Unfortunately, it lasted about three months before I rolled it, fell asleep at the wheel, coming home from a party, and um, yeah, slid off the road at 110 k's an hour, rolled it, wrecked it pretty severely. So yeah, that was my first car. Sorry, a bit longer than I expected, but uh, it's one of those answers that you've got to kind of expand on. All right. It's getting there. We're just down to drips at the moment. So what's the next question? What was your first job? <laughs> My first job? Ah, yeah, that was a funny one too. So the day I finished my HSC, so the day, so I finished my HSV, uh, HSC, last exam, in the car, and I moved to DAPTO, of all places. Country boy goes to DAPTO and works in a bottle shop. So I lasted there about three months. There's a place called um, the Dandaloo Hotel on Canahooker Road by memory. Yeah, so I lasted there about three months. Um, the manager there wasn't really a fan because kind of like my dad knew the dude that owned the pub who was a local property owner and I'd sort of just been foisted on to him as a, here's this kid, train him up, he didn't get to choose me so he was up me from day one. But it was a good learning experience, real world experience, you know, so yeah, interesting times. And then from there I went back to the bush, worked in the bush for a little while, and then got a job with Telstra, and I was with 12, Telstra for 12 years. Yep, building telephone exchanges. Oh, well, exchange equipment, basically. Are you a qualified mechanic? No, I am not. Probably to everyone's disgust, but hey, it's one of those things. I've been working on cars since I was a kid um, reading Street Machine for, you know, since the 80s. Um, I must admit, I mean, there was, you know what, you know, you know where my car experience really took off? There used to be a speed shop in Sydney. I won't name him because the guy's still in the industry a bit. He doesn't have the speed shop anymore, but he, he still makes performance parts, so I won't embarrass him. But I took my Tirana there, and they were kind of the gun speed shop in the 80s and 90s in Sydney. And I took my Tirana there to try and get some more power out of it, like did a dyno run and all that sort of stuff. This wasn't the Tirana I rolled, this was another LJ two-door that I had. Um, and uh, it made 70 horsepower on the dyno. And I'm like, so what's wrong with it? And they couldn't tell me, they were like, oh yeah, that's all it's going to make. And I'm like, yeah, no, nah, that doesn't sound right. So, did some investigating, found out the, uh, the fuel line was actually crushed flat. So during an engine change or something, one of us had obviously uh, crushed the fuel line flat with the engine sort of moving sideways in the engine bay. 
So I wasn't getting any fuel flow, but they couldn't tell me this. And I'm like, well, if the experts are no good at this stuff, so I might as well just read up all about it myself. So reading and learning for the years and the experience has got me to this point. Yes, there's guys out there that know a lot more than me, but uh, I have been and done and seen a fair bit of it. So, but, and I'm still learning. So I still go into other workshops and ask them, how they do things and they sometimes look at me like you should know this and I'm like I do know this but I have my way of doing things I want to know if there's a better way of doing it so I want to know your way of doing things just in case it's better than mine sometimes it is sometimes my way is better I feel so anyway just one of those things let's get this filter off what is your favorite car Oh, that is a tough one. Well, you know, I did grow up with Holdens, I must admit. Like I said, HQs and Tiranas and all that sort of stuff. I got introduced to Chryslers by a good mate, Peter Garden. And um, his, his Centura used to just wipe the floor, like stock Centura used to wipe the floor with my Tirana. And I just went, you know what? I need to get into this Mopar action. And Mopars were certainly a lot cheaper than Holdens and Tiranas back in the 80s and 90s. Um, but I'm still, yeah, I think Mopars are still kind of my passion. And uh, if I had a favourite, man, I, it's hard to pick a favourite Mopar. There's so many cool ones. They made so many great cars from, you know, the, the 446 pack Road Runners through to you know, charges and challenges and that sort of thing, but, uh, oh man, it's hard to put. Let's just say it'll be a big block Mopar of some sort, whether it's a Cuda or a Challenger or a Charger or even a Polari, you know, like they made some cool stuff. It's just hard to, let's just say Mopar. <laughs> Mopar is the answer. It's always the answer. All right, what's your favorite drink? I don't know why I bothered with this one. <laughs> it's a pretty simple one, isn't it? Wild Turkey. Wild Turkey is my favorite. I must admit, again, you know, I was very much kind of a Jim Beam kid, you know, as a lot of us are, but uh, my tastes refined and uh, Wild Turkey is my drink of choice. What about your favorite band? Favorite band, ooh. I gotta say Metallica is my go-to. You know, like, when I was younger, I probably, actually a guy introduced me to Metallica when I worked at the bottle shop. And I just went, what is this? It is way too fast and too loud and too, you know, I was into NXS and, you know, maybe Guns N' Roses back then, but, uh, you know, Guns N' Roses was kind of as heavy as I got back then, but, you know, Met now it's Metallica and, you know, Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath and, yeah. I am a bit of a heavy metal fan. Alrighty. What YouTube channels do you watch? Oh yeah, I actually do watch a fair bit of YouTube. Always have. Um, obviously people, some people remember my old Scotty's Garage channel, which is still around and still ticking along. I haven't uploaded anything to it for a long time, but I'll watch guys like, you know, Cletus and the Booster Boys and, uh, you know, Skid Factory, MCM, you know, those guys have been killing it for 10 years or more. I mean, you've got to respect that. So, you know, I watch all those guys, you know, Benny's Custom Works. You know, they're all mate. We're, I consider them, ben, Benny, I probably know better than, say, Alan Woody, but Alan Woody are great guys. I've only met um, Marty and Moog once. Um, they're, again, great guys. Um, but, yeah. I think we've got some really talented YouTubers here in Australia, and then some of the Americans, like Cletus, man, he's just so, it's hard not to get excited about his excitement. He gets so amped up about everything. And it's gonna be interesting to see him come back to Australia for some of that, so uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get to interview him for Street Machine, I'm sure we will, and uh, maybe get a few of those insights into the world of Cletus. Let's have a look at this oil. 
So obviously we're going to tip some Avalvaline into this. Bit of synthetic. Right, I'm going to wind down our new filter first. Put the old filter in the box. So while you're doing that, yeah. next question. What do you like most about your job? Ooh. Driving the cars. I mean, I like working on them and it is pretty cool. And we've got this awesome workshop, which is like, it's the first time in Street Machines history that we've had our own workspace, you know. Um, Street Machine's been around for, well, we're coming up on our 40th anniversary in the next two years. So, you know, we've been around for a while, but this Carnage Workshop is the first time that Street Machine has had its own workspace. So, that's pretty amazing. But, driving the cars is the best part of my job. Like, we get to work on them, but next Wednesday, when we're hooking this thing around the track, it's going to be so much fun, you know, driving the Toxic Avenger at Calder, you know, with no roll cage, or oh, well, with just a little bit of a roll cage and no bodywork. I mean, that was amazing. The MX-5 is just such an amazing, fun car to drive. You know, people go, oh, you ruined it by putting an LS in it and, you know, taking the IRS out of the rear and that sort of thing. But no, that car is hilarious to drive. It is so much fun, so much power. So... You know, Turbo Taxi, you know, it's such a great car, like, as a daily driver even, you know, it's such a great car. I mean, that's a car that weighs 1,900 kilos with me in it and runs at 11.0 but runs in gas, you know. So we've got some great cars. But, yeah, driving the cars is the best part of my job. So because you love your job so much, how did you get to that job? Ooh, now there's a story. <laughs> there's a story. Ah, and wow, this is going to drop some bombs. All right, so way, way back in the early 90s, I used to do karate, believe it or not. Yep. And there I met a guy by the name of Jason Gray, who people may remember as uh, a previous winner of Horsepower Heroes and all that sort of stuff. Uh, me and Jason became pretty good mates. Jason went off after he, like I, Jason won Horsepower Heroes twice in a car called Blown. Now I remember when he bought that car, I was, I, he took me for a, a ride in it pretty much straight after he bought it. The day he put the first supercharger on it and it just, we were going up Picnic Point Road in the dark, 180 k's an hour. That thing was a beast. And this is back in the days when dinos was just sort of kicking off. Yeah, no one was really doing much. Dino Dynamics had just started. Horsepower Heroes had just sort of kicked off at Summonats. So it was all very, very early on in, you know, I guess what you would call the Horsepower Wars because back then, you know, he won the first Horsepower Heroes for 400 horsepower at the tyres. Like, it seems like a joke now. I mean, Turbo Taxi makes, you know, fucking 550 horsepower at the tyres, you know, just, just to win with that sort of power. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. So, Jason went to work for Street Commodores, and um, I was starting to get into this whole internet thing. I started my own website uh, called MoPower Australia. It was all sort of performance modifications for Chryslers and that sort of thing. And then I, um, you know, Jason knew that I was interested. I started up a Valiant magazine also uh, called Slick Six Packs with another guy. Um, and then Jason asked, rang me one day and said, uh, would you be interested in coming in and working full time for a magazine? Now at that time I was working for a, a telecommunications company called Alcatel making fairly decent dollars. Company car, fuel car, the whole deal. And, but hated my job, really did. So, basically took a massive, massive pay cut, lost the company car, all that stuff, and went and worked for Express Publications as Jason's deputy. 
And there I met Simon Telford, who was deputy editor of Zoom magazine. Uh, Simon left to go work for Street Machine, and then a few years, oh, two and a bit years later, I decided I had enough of Express, and I basically decided I was going to go make car DVDs because I was already doing the Street Commodores DVDs, so I was going to bought myself a whole bunch of video gear, was going to go off and make car DVDs. And uh, so I left Express, and that day, that afternoon, Simon rings me and goes, what do you do on Monday? And I said, oh, not a lot. I was going to sort of have the day off. And he says, we've got this brand new HSV VZ Senator. It's the new six liter. Do you want to test drive it? And I'm like, sure. Do a test drive. Did a review on it, sent it straight in. They loved it. Simon rings me back and goes, Seto wants to meet you. So Seto was the editor of Street Machine at the time. And so I went in and met Seto, pub lunch, as Seto was, you know, that was his style. And, um, yeah, we had a few beers and a bit of a discussion. And, but I'd already decided I was moving out of Sydney at that state, and at that point. And they were going to be... They said, we want you to do the Ford magazine. I'm like, cool, I can do that, but I'll do it remotely from where I was moving to. So I freelanced for Street Machine for eight years, doing the Ford magazine and a few other things, and then doing my YouTube channel. And then when the magazine moved from Sydney to Melbourne in 2013, Telf rings me up and goes, do you want to come in full time on the magazine, but you have to move to Melbourne? I'm like, I'm in. So I moved to Melbourne in 2013, full time, Six years later, we're still here, we're doing carnage. So in some ways it's what you know, but it's also who you know. So don't burn those bridges, because the guy that you may be working with today might be the guy that's offering you a job in five years. So there's a lesson there. Alrighty. This is a bonus question I just thought of now. Yeah. Ooh, so, we're going off script. That's right, off script. <laughs> So we've ascertained that that's how you got the street machine, but yep. how did Carnage start? Carnage started over some suvers in Oakley. We're talking about we wanted to uh, amp things up with street machines, uh, social medias and YouTubes and all that sort of stuff. And we're like, well, you know, people enjoyed Scotty's Garage and enjoyed the build stuff I was doing there. So Simon says, well, what if we start getting to do some stuff like that for street machine? I'm like, yeah, cool, let's do it, you know? And um, so we come up with the idea for Turbo Taxi. And we discussed it back and forth for a few months and that sort of thing. And, and Simon's like, well, let's go start looking at taxis. And I'm like, yeah, well, let's go look. And we started looking and looking. And, and I got, it was just really hard to convince the company to go, hey, you know, give us some money and we'll go buy it. And they're like, oh, no, purchase orders, all that stuff. I'm like, no one's going to do that. So I just went out of my own car fund, which I don't have anymore, <laughs> bought a taxi, they paid me back, and then we just took off from there, and it's just been amazing, you know, like, going from buying a single taxi to having this, you know, this workspace, which is a little bit of a mess at the moment, because there's valiant parts everywhere, but, yeah, that's how Carnage got started. Yes, I do. I have two kids. Of, I have an 18-year-old daughter called Jessica, who's just finished her VCE. Well done, Jess. And uh, a 10-year-old son named Alex, who has cerebral palsy and is in a wheelchair for life, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, we kind of Jess we had when we were just turned 30. Yeah, we were 30, I think. When we had Jess. Me and my wife, we're only four days apart in our birthdays. So we had Jess when we were 30 and Alex a little bit later when we were like, you know, 38 or thereabouts. But unfortunately, yeah, oxygen loss at birth and little boy was not breathing when he came out. So, um, but yeah, so brain injury, cerebral palsy. Poor little boy, but uh, he is a happy little lad. Weird. Yeah, and Jess, even Jess was six weeks early. I mean, anyone that's had kids, you know, like six weeks preemie, she was 1,500 grams when she was born. So, yeah, our kids have certainly tested us, but Jess is fully grown and healthy. Well, she's 
Fully grown's a relative term. She's like five foot nothing. I don't even know if she's five foot. Anyway, she's a shorty. But anyway, yep, two kids. Alrighty. What is your breast? <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put the Barina as the greatest achievement, um, mainly because I wasn't the one that did the engine install. That was uh, Rob, who we bought the car off. He did a pretty reasonable job. We just had to refine a few things. Um, I would say, if you're going to say awards and things, I would say my greatest achievement is I used to do uh, pistol shooting competitively, and I won my grade, which was A grade, so pretty high grade, A grade at the Australian National Championship with a Glock 9mm against a lot of fancier pistols than that. So I would chalk that up as one of my greatest achievements. Uh, yeah, although doing all this is a pretty much of an achievement too, so it's not too bad. Gotta love those reversing beepers. is your favourite carnage car? It's a big one. Plenty to choose from. Sure is. Um, favourite, favourite, I would have to say MX-5. I know it's going to be against the grain. I mean, Turbo Taxi is definitely a favourite. I mean, it's, it's the original and it is... Everyone likes to put shit on it, but... Uh, it is an amazing car for what it is. If we'd put that car on E85 to start off with, we'd be in the ten, we'd be in the nines, I reckon. LPG so much harder, um, but you know the car still runs, you know, or ran 11-0, 131 mile an hour. You fill it up for less than 50 bucks. You can drive it to Queensland and back. Like we've driven it to Queensland and run 11s and driven it home, you know, say 1,800 k's each way. It is a very capable street car. So, yeah. Now it's pretty cool. But the MX-5, man, that car is fun. It is so much fun. It's, it's tight to sit in and that sort of thing. It ran nines on the quarter. Unfortunately, not with me behind the wheel, but I'll get my chance. Um, but yeah, it is a fast, fun little car, and we've got some more to do with that. What else you got for me? What is something you would tell 20-year-old Scotty? <laughs> oh, there's so much I could say. But the big one would be buy a house. Because when I was 20, houses were cheap. Even when I bought my first house at 27, we only paid $178,000 for it in Sydney. Like Liverpool area, but $178,000. We doubled that money in seven years. So if I'd bought a house back in, you know, 1990, it probably would have paid 80 grand for a house. I'd be well ahead of the game. Yeah. Real estate kids, it's where the money is. If you had 200 big ones, so $200,000 to spend on a car, what would you build? So build, not just go out and buy, what would you build? Twin turbo, Hemi, Dodge Challenger, Pro Street to do like drag week, drag challenge, that sort of thing. Dodge Challenger is one of the most aggressive, coolest looking muscle cars ever. Hemi V8, fantastic motor. Put some turbos on that, tub the thing, put some rubber under it. Man, that would be amazing. Could I do it for 200 grand? That would be the question. I mean, you know, you'd, yeah. Cars like that, they cost money now. A lot of money to build. We're still not seeing that oil yet, so keep pouring. What is your favourite food? <laughs> I guess my favourite foods are chicken and pasta. And combined, that would be my favourite food. So uh, if I'm hitting up the wife for uh, a favourite dish, it's always chicken pasta bake. But uh, 
Yep. Chicken and pasta, they're my favourites. It probably shows. What do you want to do before you die? Drag week. That's a pretty simple one. Yep, I want to take a car to drag week. That would be awesome. Take a car there and compete. Would be fantastic. What car would you take? It's a tough one. I'd, I'd wanted to do the Barra Fox body thing. Um, not a Mustang, actually. We had a Fairlane, oh, Fairmont, I should say. Uh, Fox body Fairmont. We had one of those lined up in the States, and I had pretty much all the plans laid out to do the Barra thing, but uh, the company didn't want to sign off on it, which, yeah, that's fine, you know. It's, it is their money after all. Uh, I would have loved to have done it, and of course, you know, the Fox Body Barra thing has been done now, and the boys did it so good, you know. The Skid Factory and Benny Custom Works, they did that um, Fox Body Mustang for Ben Paganani, and they did it awesomely, like mid-eights. Man. Full respect to those guys, that was amazing. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it. Because that was killer. This is the last question, just as we're about to drop the car down. Yeah. What car are you, or are we, taking the Summonats? Summonats, yes. Um, well, it won't be the Barina. Uh, we're going to take, well, hopefully the Volvo, the Trollvo, will be going to Summonats might not be registered but we'll take it there and cruise around hopefully everything's all running right we'll we'll see what happens on the dyno well hopefully this afternoon on the other side of that we're going to probably take the mx5 which people are going to be like oh you took it before but yeah but it's going to be different we're doing an engine swap on the mx5 and it's going to be different and you're going to see that on a very soon future episode of Carnage. See you then.